Hey, what's up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan and today what in the heck are we going to do in this video? We are going to explain the concepts of temperature and pressure. Okay, so as we break that down, first thing we're going to do is define what the heck pressure and temperature are. Number two, we're going to interpret what are called Maxwell Boltzmann distributions that describe particle speeds at the same and at different temperatures. Three, we are gonna convert between different units of pressure. Four, convert between different units of temperature. Okay, so first things first, let's define what the heck pressure is. It is simply defined as the force per unit area on a surface. And it is defined by the formula that you see on your screen and also in the notes. Now, in chemistry class, we're really going to be focused on pressures of gases. And as we think about pressure as it relates to gases, it's the force that gas exerts on the walls of its container. And you've got a thrilling image in your notes, but also check out this amazing animation from the University of Colorado. It gives you a particulate representation of neon gas with this amazing pressure sensor. And again, think about a gas as exerting pressure by colliding with the walls of its container. And as we'll learn, we'll talk about how temperature can affect your pressure. We'll talk about how volume can affect your pressure. And we'll also talk about how the amount of gas can affect the pressure as well. Now in the lab, we're often gonna measure pressure and we can do that using a pressure sensor or if we're looking to measure the atmospheric pressure, we can use something called a barometer. So don't get confused if as we work through some problems, you hear about barometric pressures or a barometer used in the question. That's just a device that we use to measure atmospheric pressure. Now, unfortunately for you, there are a lot of units for pressure, including atmospheres, millimeters mercury, kilopascals, torres, and a whole lot more. And if you take a look at your notes, and lucky for you, also on your formula chart, you're shown the relationships between those different units of pressure. And we'll talk about how to convert between those different units in a different video. Whew, and that about does it for pressure. Although I'm feeling a lot of pressure right now. How much force per how much area. And typically when we think about pressure as it relates to a gas, we're thinking about the force exerted by those gas particles on the walls of its container. All right, and that brings us to temperature, which is defined as a measure of the average kinetic energy or energy of emotion or energy of motion of the particles in a sample of matter. Now, as we'll learn, all samples of matter have some kinetic energy, whether we're talking about a solid, a liquid, or a gas. Gas, 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 liquid, solid. But again, it's important to recognize that the temperature is directly related to how much kinetic energy those particles have. Now, because sometimes it can be difficult to understand how much kinetic energy or energy of motion we have when we're looking at a paper, we will often use particle diagrams with vectors to help us illustrate how much kinetic energy different samples have. The longer your vectors are, the greater the kinetic energy. So as you take a look at your notes, you've got two samples of a gas. The image on your left has short vectors and therefore indicate less kinetic energy. And the image on your right has that sample of a gas with much, with much longer vectors indicating a much higher temperature, greater amount of kinetic energy. Now, in addition to interpreting particle representation with vectors, you also wanna be able to look at and interpret Maxwell-Boltzmann distributions, which is another way to describe particle speeds. As you look at this first example in your notes, you're given a series of different gases all at the same temperature. And notice that each gas has its own distribution at a given temperature. At the peak of that distribution, you can determine the average particle velocity for that given sample of gas. And notice that the lighter gases travel much more quickly on average than your heavier gases will. I like to think of these gases as boxers in a ring. The lighter, lightweight boxers are able to move more quickly than your heavier gases. Additionally, take a look at the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution in which you have one gas at three different temperatures. Notice that the average velocity at the greater temperature is much faster than the average velocity at the lower temperature. Again, Maxwell-Boltzmann distributions. Now, as we measure temperature in the lab, it's gonna be a little easier because there are a few less units that you have to know. One is the Celsius scale, 
And this is the scale in which water freezes at zero degrees and boils at 100 degrees. But you also be comfortable with the Kelvin scale. And this is an important scale because it's an absolute temperature scale that we use in the scientific community. There are no negative values on the Kelvin scale, which is important when we're doing some calculations. On this scale, water freezes at 273 Kelvin and boils at 373. Now, because there are no negative temperatures on the Kelvin scale, absolute zero or zero Kelvin is the theoretical lowest temperature possible. And at that point, all molecular motion stops. Everything has a kinetic energy of zero, theoretically. Now, in order to convert between those two scales, there's a quick formula where you simply have to add 273 to your temperature in degrees Celsius. And then lastly, it's important to note that temperature and pressure has huge effects on gases. And so if we're gonna do some experimentation with gases, we need to make sure that we set standard temperature and pressure conditions for comparison between experiments. And those standards are one atmosphere pressure and zero degrees Celsius for temperature. And again, those are known as standard temperature and pressure and are commonly abbreviated as STP. All right, and that does it for this video. As always, check out the references below. Have a fantastic day.